guys what's going on good afternoon how y'all doing <sighs> yes today is my day off it's friday i'm in my trusty bathroom where it's quiet sometimes but um let's get into green leaf oh i know some of y'all surprised because i don't really do too much tv show reviews and this is not really a review this is just a walk through from what i've seen and my my view about it my point you know what i thought about the show so far well um at first i was kind of skeptical of watching it because i'm like mm -hmm. you know you get tired of the drama stuff and all that kind of thing and everything but then i started watching james colwell i saw that he watches it and i watch his reviews i watched some of his reviews on it and he is a very good reviewer of shows he he talks in detail he gives you the scoop and all that hold on one second okay i'm back so he gives you a, you know a good inside of the show and i said okay you know what let me give this a chance plus everybody was on twitter talking about it and i'm always on twitter you know i'm just i'm always watching i don't really say too much to anybody you know that's how i do my thing when i'm on youtube i watch i watch because like madea said sometimes you gotta watch <laughs> but um i do watch you know and just observe everybody and then sometimes i'll kick in and just say hey what's up whatever um but like on Twitter, I'll jump in every now and then to talk, say something to some people. But you know, I, like I said, I'm an observer. So after watching James Caldwell and stuff like that, I decided, you know, girl, let's go ahead and give this a chance. So I was home one day and they had a, a marathon of it, I guess, like a because it was coming on the next day. So they just had a whole line from coming on TV. So my husband and I, we just started watching them. First of all, let me just say this. They got the right person, Miss Shirley Caesar. Caesar, Lord have mercy, Miss Shirley. We're going to call her Pastor. Pastor Shirley C. Honey, I grew up listening to her music for, as a child. My mother would play her songs. And one of her songs, my mother is always, when she got mad at me, she would talk to me through Pastor Shirley. Meaning, she had a song called No Charge. Now, all the old school people out there, if your parents played Shirley, you know, in the house, and her old school albums, you would know this song that I'm talking about. It's called No Charge. And the lyrics go, for nine months, I carried you, no charge. So, and it goes on about how she raised you and how she carried you and, you know, and all this other stuff. And to me, every time my mother would play that, I'm like, oh, what did I do now? You know, because it's like she's telling me, you got the nerve to act like this, and now, and I, you, and I carried you through nine months with no charge. <laughs> but the song is very good. It had you thinking, and you don't, you don't, you don't um, appreciate something like that until you get older. Because after I got became an adult and I listened to it, I said, wow, well, now I get the message. Okay. Um, whenever I hear Shirley, you know, Pastor Shirley, her voice just do something to me. It's like she send chills to my body. It's like she she's the only one that's a gospel singer that could really make me think and get into my thoughts and just make me feel some type of way. You know, she brings out my emotions. She's the only one that can do that for me. Um. So when I saw that they had hers with the opening theme called um, Satan, we're going to tear this kingdom down. That song alone is so powerful. And every time I hear her sing it, it's like she got this just this electrifying voice. You know what I'm saying? That just runs through you. So I was happy to know because Oprah is good at picking out people to do some things. So I was glad she, was, she got on board for that. Um... After I watched it and I got the characters. And let me tell you how I know this is a good, good, good series. Is that if my husband can sit down and watch it and say it's good. Because he don't like to get into stuff like that. But when he said it's good, it's good. Okay. So let's get into this green leaf real quick. Um, It's really good. Gracie, well, Gigi, Gigi and Noah. Let's talk about them. You can tell when when she came back, you can tell there was chemistry there. You can tell they still loved each other. But honey, in that last episode when they was getting down and dirty, <sighs> mm, yeah, he wanted that for he wanted that back for a long time. And she um put that undelivered uh 
that Christian undelivered soul on him. And hmm, whoop, there it is. But um, you can tell the love is still there for them. You can you can definitely tell that. Um, Jacob and Carissa. Jacob got on my last nerve. From the time I seen the first episode, he got on my last nerve. You don't like your wife. I mean, you don't feel some type of way for her. And people were saying how she's irritating. She's this and that. Okay, but you know what? It's not wrong with her being a powerful woman. And she got a little chip on her shoulder. Yes, she does. Yes. She got this little attitude with her. But that's not a reason that she's on your wife. Okay? They got some issues there. Like I said, I ain't going to get into the whole thing. I'm just giving you a review of uh, my point of view of it. But now... Huh? He came to his to, to his senses when um that other couple, that lady, that couple that he was they was gonna do a little threesome with. But well, anyway, that wanted him to get his father on TV and stuff and do a little business. Well, he, huh? Jacob saw how he that guy was interested in Carissa, and I guess that woke him up a little bit, huh? Oh, when another man wanna tap your wife's ass. Now you want to wake up and smell the coffee or you want to hear the church bells ringing. But before you was laying with Miss, um, not, you know, not so bright, you know what I'm saying? You was laying, laying, laying it down with her because, you know, you want to get off what you want to get off while you had your wife at home. But when another man was ready to knock on your wife's door and slide into her, her, her hole of glory, Oh, now you see the light. Don't see the light now. Let him dig into that. And, and you should watch. Because you've been digging into somebody else, Jacob. That's just how I feel about it. But anyway, they got their own good terms now. Which is okay. They husband and wife, they working it out. But I still think she should have gave that other guy a little something that he can feel. And make him say hallelujah once or twice. <clears throat> I'm just saying. Okay. So, um. Ooh. James and May. Now, I love me some Keith David. I love me some Keith David. I love him. I love him. I love him. But Keith David, he went back to dead presidents on that ass. He was going to get Mr. Matt, his brother. Oh, nasty pervert. He was going to get him together real quick in that, in that room with that gun. I still think you should shoot him up the ass for messing with these, with these little girls, these little nasty old man. But anyway, we're going to get... But I don't want Keith David to go to jail. But he brought it back with dead presence when he pulled at that gun. I was like, oh, I see you got a little bit of dead presence still rolling around in there. Pastor or bishop. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something about the whole thing. They're all Christians. They're all pastors and bishops and deacons and everything. But everybody cusses like a damn sailor. And everybody's screwing. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's screwing. Noah... I feel bad for Isabel, but she had a gut. Isabel, your gut was telling you that something is there. Something is there. And I think that's why May was wanting to pay for the wedding and all that kind of stuff. And she was happy that Noah was going to marry Isabella. And when she finally was moving out, moving away, she was even more happier because she wanted him away from Gigi. I'm still trying to figure out... She hate to me, she don't hate her daughter, but she don't like her. And I think the reason why she don't like her daughter, because her daughter is like her at times. Sometimes when we have children that reminds them reminds us of ourselves, we be like, mm, I don't, I know where you act, I know where you get that from, but I ain't gonna say nothing because I have a daughter like that. Sometimes she act just like me, and I'd be like, hmm, but I don't say nothing because I, <laughs> she will get knocked out. But anyway. So I love James, you know. I, I I love his. I love the. I love the whole show. Miss May, she act like she's a little too much at times for me. Um, Charity and Kevin. I wish they just go ahead and find out. Charity, you need to snatch that damn phone and just say, you know what the hell with it. Don't tell, ask him because you know he gonna lie. He up there talking about some. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but you're looking at men. Okay, if you don't like your wife in that way, why did you get her knocked up? Or why don't you just say, you know what, baby? Before we go in any further into this marriage and have children, I love men as well. I'm bisexual or I am gay. And I love men as well. And let her take it from there. You up here got this girl wandering and pondering. And she pregnant, carrying twins, of course. And you 
out over here looking at men. <sighs> really? Like Justin J would say, because I like how he said, well, as Justin J would say, he probably want to get up in his little, and play in his little booty hole juice. Who knows? He want to get up in them other men and play in their little booty hole or their sandbox or whatever. But you you need to tell your wife the truth, um, Kevin, because that is not cool. We, that is not cool to be like that to her. I'm sorry. And I hope next episode she snatched that damn phone and find out what she was, huh, what she, hmm. That's all I'm going to say about that because Kevin is pissing me. Kevin will piss me up more than Jacob did. I'm just, I'm just here to tell you. Okay. Now. Now. Mm, mm, mm. Uncle Mac. You little nasty bastard. Yeah, I said you little nasty bastard, Uncle Mac. Because you know why you nasty? You up here dreaming about this. This You got a young girl in your bed. Okay, you know, I think you was messing around. You was messing around with faith. And I hope. Yes, she was. You was messing around with faith. And when James finished with your ass, ain't going to be nothing left of, of you. Because I was hoping that last episode, uh, I was hoping that somebody would have broke your back and snapped your goddamn neck. Because you was a nasty old man up there wanting these little girls. And you got a book where you look at young girls face and skin and all kind of stuff. You just nasty. Just nasty. I don't understand what's wrong with you. I don't know where you got that sickness from, but you need to stop. That is your brothers. That is your sisters. Your sister. Child that you mess with. And now the girl is gone. She's dead. But you mess with her. You nasty. You nasty for that. Very nasty. See, this is why you know, he he just pissed me off. And he up there crying, talking about all oh, this and God. Stop stop with all that God stuff when you up there doing wrong. I don't like to see I don't I oh I hate people do that. I really do. But um I was ex. This is you know, this is the exit from Greenleaf. Also Greenleaf Greenleaf is a very good show. Um I'm Y'all need to get it together. If you haven't watched it, I encourage you to watch this show. Um, I don't watch too much TV of anything, I, you know, but I do like Greenleaf. Um, I do like, like American Horror Story, and I do watch The Walking Dead, as y'all know, and The Strain. So I only have a few shows that I like and I will talk about. But I did not give, like, an episode review because I don't do all that kind of stuff. I just watch it for a little while, and I get on, and I tell you how I like it, what I thought about it. And I really think it was good. It's a really good show. You should get in into it for real um i really do think y'all would like it um i was asked not too long ago why i don't go to church let me tell you something let me just have a little talk with y'all for a minute um people got it twisted they think because you don't go to church that you don't believe in god i believe in god i was brought up in the church you get what i'm saying my mother bad got me baptized at nine years old which you know as an adult i would never do that to my children because I want my children to understand what they're about to do. If your child have full knowledge of what they're about to do, then you get them baptized. But if they don't know what they are doing, I just say I always felt like that should be something that they do when they get older and understand it. That's just my point about it. I'm not here to make a big discussion about it. Um, that's just my way of thinking. That's my point of view. Um... You know, so I was, we always went to a small church, okay? To me, the small storefront church were more, they were more family-like, more at home-like than these big old churches and these mega churches. Because, you know, as I got older and while I did, as the, as ch times I turned changing, there were being more and more bigger churches built, mega churches were being built. And... The church that I used to go to um, is no longer there. You know, I moved out of the city. Now I'm in the, in the South. But, you know, I, I just, I have to find something that's, that's for me, that's right, that will fit me. You get what I'm saying? I have to find something that will fit me and I get comfortable in. But I could be in a closet and I could still praise God in the closet and he still hear my prayers. So I don't need to be sitting in nobody's church. You get what I'm saying? But sometimes it is good to go and not only to listen to the word, but also to, you know, meet other people in church as well. But I, I have nothing against church. That's I don't. I don't have nothing against church. What I have anything against is 
as time get went on, there was a church. I'm not sure where it was. I think it was in Tampa, where the church asked a lady because she wanted to become a member um, for her W two form. I don't like that. If you are coming, if you want to be a member at a church, it doesn't matter what how much money you make. You coming into the house of the Lord to listen to the word. So it all that shouldn't matter. It should not matter. And my thing is, sometimes with these big churches, you are paying so your tithes, you pay, you know, you tell you paying all of this stuff. You put money in the collection plate, you put money wherever. And sometimes when you get hard and down and hard on your luck, and you go to the same church or wherever you go and say, you know what? My house is almost in foreclosure or my rent is due and I don't have it. Can the church loan me money or can the church help me? Sometimes there is no help from these churches. And that's what pissed me off. But there's no help from these churches. But that same $2 that I put in that damn collection plate, you living in a damn going house on the hill. You driving three or four cars. So you can't help me with my, with my rent assistance for the month, whatever the case may be. Sometimes they don't they, sometimes what you put in, sometimes you don't get nothing back in return, and that's wrong. That's just my opinion about it. I don't know. I'm not here to judge anybody, but this is just what I have um, experienced with other churches that I've known people to go to and heard about stuff. This is just what I experienced. Um, now, when I was going to the small church, the storefront church, if you didn't have food in your house, the sisters would get together and they would make a, a package and they would bring it to your home and they would pray for you and they would pray with you. And even sometimes they would stay there and help cook the meals with you. That's what that's what I was brought it up into. Sometimes, you know, on Easter Sunday, they'll invite the whole congregation down in the, you know, down to the basement where there is dinner. And they didn't have to pay for dinner because we are breaking bread at the same table. We are, you know, we are family. That's just how it was back then. It's not the same now. It's not the same now. These big churches, the of course you gotta pay rent on your thing, no problem on your on your property. But what are you? What are you doing to help other people? You get what I'm saying? And let me tell you, because you are a Christian person, you got a sitting soul too. Some of these Christians out here think, oh, you just, I'm a this and I'm that. My honey, y'all sin just as hard as we do. So I don't have a problem with going to church. It's just that I have a problem with people, people who sit there and glorify themselves like as they're the best Christian, but still sneak it in the next room with the deacon. Oh, yes, I could tell y'all some stories about that, but that'll be next time on my other page because I have to get deep and deep and deep into that story. Oh, yeah. The church kids, mm, some fast little winches. Them church boys, hmm, like to stick and move. Oh, I got some stories, honey, but it won't be on this page. But anyway, that's my little experience. So, I will talk to y'all later. Thanks for listening to me about the green leaf and everything else. So, I'm about to go back and finish cooking my food. And I will see y'all later. Sorry it was a little bit too long, but hey, if you want to fast forward through it, you can. Or whatever the case may be. But thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you guys later. And I hope y'all really do check out Greenleaf. Talk to you soon. Bye.